Hello everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Over on this channel, I like to share all about my journey towards a more magical life that is both creative and sustainable. And today, we're going to Disney World! Woo! Basically, I'm going to be sharing with you about the time that I accidentally knit a beanie while visiting Walt Disney World with my family. And by the way, I will be sharing all the details for this project, including the pattern and other materials that I used at the end of this video. So if that is something that you are interested in, be sure to stick around for that. As for now, I need to go pack for my trip. Point at it like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you hear a lot of noise in the background. My husband is giving the kids a bath and this is the only time that I could check in. It has been a whirlwind the last three days. Today was like our off resort day. We ended up going to Disney Springs. I came back here for a while while my kid napped. And I was hoping to get a lot more done, but I had messed up. I think I did like a make one right when I was supposed to make one left or vice versa. Regardless, it resulted in some kind of hole, like a small one. Or like at first it didn't really bother me, but then the more I added on rows and kept looking at it, the more it really bugged me. So I ripped it all back. So this is about as far as I ripped back. So as I said, I did have more done, but then I ripped back in order to fix that hole. So I'm almost done with my increase rows. I think I only have one more increase row to do. And then from there on out, it is just knitting in the round. So I'm gonna continue to chip away at this a little bit before I go to bed for the evening. One thing I will say is doing this in the parks. I actually did get a couple people who gave me some weird looks because I was that lady knitting in the middle of Disney World. It's just really overwhelming being here. There's a lot to see and a lot to take in. And I feel like having this with me was actually really calming and grounding and helped kind of slow things down in an otherwise like super busy, really crazy day. So I am really glad that I brought this along with me because it just felt a lot more calming than I think scrolling on my phone would have been. I don't know how much more I'll be able to get done while we're here, but I know we have a couple more chill days lined up, like one more resort day and then a couple more days in the parks. And then hopefully on the plane home, I'll be able to get some more done and make up for everything that I had to rip back. But that's where I'm at so far.
the front to the front because tonight Chef Ali is preparing one of his specialties which I am certain you will enjoy. Remember, food always comes to those who love to cook but not to those who are ready to cook. coming to you from my bed. We traveled home yesterday and we are all, every single one of us, sick after visiting the world's most magical petri dish. So I thought I would show you, this is everything that I accomplished at Disney, which I'm really proud of myself. I'm making good progress. So I think what helped is just any spare moment I had, this is what I did to occupy myself instead of scrolling on my phone. My screen time was down, I think like 54% last week and I made more progress on this. So that kind of taught me something is that I need to just take advantage of more of that empty space, those random little five minutes here, two minutes there, just doing one row at a time. It really helped make a lot more progress than I, I realized. Luckily, we don't have anything really to do today. I was planning on kind of unpacking and doing some laundry. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> I just don't feel like it. I'm way too tired. I did grocery shopping this morning. That took pretty much everything that I had. So I'm just gonna con continue to chip away at this and hopefully it's done sooner rather than later, but I think I'm at about the halfway point now and that's all I'm gonna do is just continue to work at it. So I just finished the evening watching The Office and knitting, just plugging along, but genuinely wanted to ask because my favorite Office quote just came up, which is, I want to thank God because God gave me this Dundee and I feel God in this Chili's tonight. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious to know what your favorite Office quote is, so feel free to let me know in the comments. <laughs> Gonna leave it at that, pick it back up tomorrow. <laughs> Here she is. So the funny thing is that I actually finished knitting this probably two days after I last saw you guys. I couldn't film about it because I lost my voice and I was so sick and I kept coughing through everything. So we're actually maybe two weeks later. I'm all healed up, thankfully, and I can finally tell you guys about this hat and it's all done. So throughout our time at Walt Disney World, I learned a lot about the power of seizing those fleeting moments in order to indulge in my craft. If you've ever been to Disney World before, you know that there is a lot of standing and waiting in lines that happens. So no matter what those waiting moments looked like, whether it was in line or, you know, waiting on somebody else, those spare moments compounded very quickly and I was able to sneak in a few stitches here, a couple rows there. It was incredible to witness how these small moments would just build up on top of each other. So I was able to make a lot more progress on this project a lot more quickly than I had originally anticipated. So my number one takeaway from this experience for all of my fellow knitters or crocheters out there is really to take advantage of those small pockets of time. Like they're small enough that you think that you don't even have time to work on your project. I promise you do and it adds up. I'm truly amazed at how this has changed my creative journey. I am bringing my knitting with me everywhere now, so yeah. Moral of the story, never leave home without your knitting or crochet project because the next time you find yourself with just a couple of spare moments, you can get to work and you will be amazed to see what you can create with that. So getting into the stats breakdown of this project, this is the Muscleberg 
I think that's how you say it, Musselberg Beanie from Isolde. This pattern is a double layered multi-gauge beanie. What's amazing about this pattern, what I really loved, is that she shows you in the instructions how to take your gauge in a way that you can use essentially whatever yarn you want to knit this beanie. So as for the yarn that I chose to use, I picked Merino from Knitting for Olive. It is super soft. I use the color Blood Orange. It's nice and light. What's perfect is that the spring weather is starting to slowly but surely creep in here and it's breathable and light enough that I think it's gonna be perfect for the season ahead. And I used size 3.5 millimeter or US 4 knitting needles. I would have preferred to go a size down, but that's just the smallest size that I had for my cable, like interchangeable knitting needles. I believe I made the adult size small. I cannot for the life of me remember exactly what size I made, but I did make one size down from the one that was suggested for my head circumference, just because I knew the yarn, the merino would stretch and grow a little bit with use and I really prefer my beanies to be a little more fitted. I'm super in love with the color. I'm super in love with the texture. It was a great project to take on the go as well because once you kind of have your crown established, it's worked top down. Actually, let me show you. So it's knit top down, but it's knit in this double layer. So it's essentially a tube that you're knitting. So once you kind of have this top portion established, you're just knitting in the round. You don't have to purl at all, nothing. It's simple enough that you can just plug away at this without having to think too hard about it, without having to concentrate too much on it, which I very, very, very much appreciate. <laughs> I hope this video has inspired you to take those in-between moments and really make them your own, whether you're knitting or drawing or writing, crocheting, whatever it is, there is definitely beauty to be had in seizing those small pockets of time. If you enjoyed knitting with me in the most magical place on earth, then I would love it if you could give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content like this. And for exclusive behind the scenes and bonus content, you can always check out my Patreon. Your support means the world to me and allows me to continue making silly little videos like this one. So I very much appreciate all of my Patreon supporters. That link can be found in the description box below if that sounds interesting to you. Also, all of the links for the materials to make your own version of this beanie will be linked in the description box below as well. I love you and appreciate you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. And until next time, I hope you have fun creating your own magical life that is either by hand or second hand or however you want to make it. Bye, guys.